I'm Andrew Moran, Ellen's economics correspondent. Very, very rocky. Death by government. Drain the swamp. Hello and welcome to another installment of Liberty Nation Swamp Economics videocast. I'm Andrew Moran, Ellen's economics correspondent. This week, no, the Republicans will not make inflation worse. President Joe Biden has stated on a couple of occasions in the last couple of weeks that the Republicans will make inflation worse. From White House Chief of Staff Ron Klain to Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre, inflation will not improve under the GOP. Even Keynesian economist Paul Krugman made the same claim in a recent blog post on the New York Times website. Heck, some newspapers are laughably arguing that former President Donald Trump's 2017 Tax Cut and Jobs Act led to today's inflation. But the charges being made by all of these people are nothing more than hoping they are true, rather than if, in fact if they are true in the first place. Before we start determining if Republicans can bring inflation back to its peak of 9.1%, let's go through once again what led to today's cost of living crisis. So, the Federal Reserve unleashed trillions of new units of currency into the national economy and enabled the federal government to approve trillions in deficit finance spending that led to too many dollars chasing too few goods, pricing up the cost of goods and services. But simply, the Fed printed too much and Washington spent too much. That's it. Everything else that occurred from the global supply chain crisis to the war in Eastern Europe simply added more inflationary pressures. Now, when it comes to the Republicans, it is challenging to see exactly how they would make inflation any worse than it already is. As this program has briefly discussed before, the GOP could actually improve inflation conditions by acting obstructionists and ensuring the White House and its allies do not move ahead with new spending. The Republicans could also try to make a real non-COVID related dent to the federal deficit, not the phony one that President Joe Biden keeps touting any time he speaks in front of a microphone. Meanwhile, the Republican Party has promised that the U.S. would become energy independent again and it would remove runaway spending. This might be too hard of a promise to keep. First, the Democrats still hold the keys to the White House, which can make or break America's energy situation through executive orders. Perhaps Republicans could provide some certainty or an ace in the hole for the energy industry. Second, it is also challenging to think the Republicans on the issue of runaway spending when they have been as horrible as the Democrats in this arena. Aside from just a few Republicans, be it Senator Rand Paul or Representative Thomas Massey, most of the party has been ready to spend, spend, spend any chance they get. This is why they ran huge deficits before and during the pandemic. This is why they exploded the national debt under George W. Bush by putting two wars and a new entitlement scheme on a credit card. As Philip Bush famously said, fool me once, shame on you, shame on you, fool me, you can't fool me again. Perhaps the GOP is being forthright in that it believes its policies will end lower inflation. But the main culprit in fighting inflation is the Federal Reserve by controlling the printing presses and interest rates. The Federal Reserve is currently entrenched in a tightening cycle, and there could be a debate if the central bank is doing enough. Hint, it's not doing enough. But ultimately, the public will learn if the nation is winning the war on inflation sometime next year, when the effects of rate hikes will be seen. Here is a summary. The Inflation Reduction Act will do nothing to fight inflation. The Republicans' plans will, not, will, do not, will not do much for inflation. The Federal Reserve is not raising interest rates enough to reduce inflation at the rate it wishes. In the meantime, the people suffer. And it won't be sold overnight because consumers are buying another brand of Raisin Bran, despite what President Joe Biden says. That's it for me this week. Please read my full Swampanomics column on the pages of LibertyNation.com, where I discuss the third quarter GDP report, diesel shortages, and Halloween inflation. Thank you. Entertaining, informative, and just plain fun. Watch Liberty Nation's The Conservative Five. 
produced by conservatives for conservatives. C5 is a left free zone, hosted by Liberty Nation's Hi, Lisa, Lisa K. Garner, joined by a raucous, irreverent panel Maggot of authors, friendly. deconstructing the leftist narratives, debating the hot, hot topics, topics and remembering to laugh. You heard it here first. <laughs> Join the official conservative safe space. You did that to piss Jeff off. Liberty Nation's The Conservative Five. I'm Andrew Moran, Ellen's economics correspondent. Very, very rocky. Death by government. Drain the swamp. 